Uh, I haven't got much to say. Both men were getting their first first pieces out of the way. I'm sure there'll be more to follow over the next 12 weeks. What has George Groves learned from the first fight that he's taken into the second fight? Well, he's learned that what we believed in the first fight worked. So now he's got a deep conviction in what previously we only believed in. Now we have a knowing of what works. Today in the press conference, George alluded to the fact that you might have wrote a letter to the board saying that to look at Cole's physical state after after the, the battle we had with George in the first fight. Um, is that true? That's true, yes. But I said I would do that directly after the first fight, regardless of uh, whether we were fighting I again. That. I appreciate yeah, that. So I'm just doing what I said I would do. Do you, do you think Cole, uh, his medicals are, are going to come up? Do you think Cole will pass them everything to go? As, I have no idea. Thing? I hope he does, because obviously I want uh, George to have the fight that he wants, which is Carol's. But I don't want to be involved in a fighting that maybe after the fight I'm sitting down thinking, I did say I'd do that and I didn't follow through. Yeah. A fight that happened two weeks before their first encounter with Perez, the heavyweight in New York. And that other gentleman now, uh, his career is over. Um, he was in a coma. He's in a bad way. And this is from being a warrior and taking too many shots. And uh, even though that was a close competitive fight, he was taking far too many shots from as early as the second round. And uh, I don't want to see that happen to somebody else. George said today that the only, the only bit of lightning that struck was Howard Foster's decision in granting him the win. Do you mm -hmm. think that's a fair statement? Do you agree with that? Well, I suppose if you look at the first six rounds as being dominated by George, you can tell me if you disagree. And then rounds seven and eight, Carl having more success. But if you still separate those rounds and score them just as scoring rounds, I still believe George would have won those rounds also. Uh, it does look to the to the naked eye, obviously, that the fight is changing because the first six rounds, Carl landed very, very little. Um, so the lightning striking twice, basically what he's saying is everything was going our way first time and the referee stopped. Do you think if George wouldn't have been as vocal as he had been with the RBF, this, this rematch wouldn't have happened? It would have been, been I don't believe the rematch would have happened. I don't think that uh, Carl Froch wants this rematch. He sat on ringside the night before the IBF actually mandated it and said that he doesn't want to go over all ground with George uh, in the future possibly, but not right now. He can't get excited from it. does nothing for him. He said fighting Chavez in Vegas makes the hairs of my arms stand up on end. He said that fight excites me. He said George doesn't. Um, Robert McCracken directly after the first fight said this was not a fight we wanted anyway in the first place. We didn't want this fight. Uh, and now they have to do it again. So I believe they're in a fight they don't want to be in. Do you think some of the mental battles that have been won, i.e. Eddie Hearn made the venue announcement mm -hmm. into an event within itself. Mm -hmm. uh, everyone was speculating. It's turned mm -hmm. out that George has got the home decision in the venue with it being Wembley, being a London boy. Mm -hmm. Do you think that's a small mental victory for George there? Well, it's round two to George, like he said, because every little aspect of this game that you can win, just like Sugar Ray Leonard would have done, like Mayweather does today, every single aspect does play a little part, no matter how minute it is. Uh, we're fighting again, or those two gentlemen are fighting again, because George went to the IBF and it got mandated. So that was George's decision, inevitably, that they fight again. Uh, the fact that it's at Wembley, did George and Eddie agree to it? Who knows? I don't know. But we're up at Wembley. That's George's hometown. It's where he would like it, and I'm sure it's not where Carl would like to be. Last time for the first fight as a trainer, you seem to be thrusted, without being disrespectful, into the deep end. Everything at the last moment you was in involved. How much do you think you've learnt from that process, and where does that stand you in, in better stead as a trainer for this fight? Uh, I don't think I've learnt anything as far as being thrust in at the deep end. At the end of the day, I was in a, a world title fight with a fighter which I'd been involved in before. Mm -hmm. So that in itself wasn't being thrust in the deep end. I think George was thrust in the deep end. George had to make a decision quickly to go with a coach. Uh, I was probably chosen by default, but who cares? Uh, our first fight worked out well together, so we have more belief in each other. George has more belief in me, and I think that will stand a good stead. Do you think that time, the extra time you've had to, to prepare with George, to learn and work? I know you've worked with George before, but on a one-to-one -one direct basis, do you think that's stood, stood your relationship with George in, in a better place now? I think everything that happened during the fight and definitely everything that's happened after the fight has made George and I understand each other a bit more know each other a bit more inevitably will bring us closer together. We went into training a week after the first fight. We had two weeks in training, then we took a week off for Christmas. Then we did another week before we went to America for the appeal, and we've been back in the gym since we got back from there.
um, and I just do believe that you'll see better results because of that. George Gross spoke about the changing of the guard, the new guard stepping up. Does he does he realistically believe it, it is his time now and this, this is going to happen? Did you realistically ask me that question, brother? You saw the first fight, you know how he felt going into the first fight. Is there any reason why he shouldn't believe that there's going to be a change in the guards in the second? Well, listen, I'm neutral, I'm here just to I ask know, the question. I know you are, but I'm interested when somebody asks me questions that kind of obvious, you know, so this George. Is just, this is a thing George Gross does quite a lot now. He reverses a question with a question to the man that's asking him. So it depends if the man asking the question is asked something obvious, as like asking me, am I white and Irish? Well, as far as I can see, you are white and Irish. Well, as far as you can see, you watched the first fight. So yeah. why would he not believe going into the second one based off of that, that he's going to be the ch changing the guard? Okay. Okay, well listen, I want to thank you for giving my time today. Right, it's the first press conference today, so no doubt things are going to heat up a little bit more as it takes the tours around around the cities of the UK and stuff. And No doubt these two men are going to be sick of each other by come fight night. I don't so know, I think Carl gets it. sick of George really early. Uh, George just takes it in his stride. Do you think that's the way he is, George? He doesn't let things bother him. He seems to be what I know of him. You know, I don't see him get too wound up about people. I don't hear him slag somebody off. I don't hear him talk down about people. So he, they're obviously not playing too much in his mind, or he'd be he'd be vocal about them. What's going on with the Rubik's cube today? I look uh, round. I see Carl talking. Next thing I see, I see to his playing with a Rubik's cube. Could you tell me what's going on there? I don't know. He's just trying to entertain himself, I suppose. Do you think that's a way of just switching off? you have to ask George that, brother. Oh, I will do. Listen, Paddy, thank, thank you. you for giving me a bit of time.